I came here legally and I earned my citizenship to be an American citizen. I rounded the, the numbers up in New York City alone since the beginning of this, they call them migrants. They're illegal aliens who are breaking the law. We as American citizens, you, me, and everybody else who pay taxes has spent $9 billion in New York alone to have these people stay in hotels and ruin the entire Manhattan city. Jim Brewer. 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 Hey, this is Jim Brewer. What's up, dude? How are you doing? I'm feeling good. It's a good, good day, man. Good. That's great to hear. Hot Florida day. Oh, yeah. How's it over there by you? Uh, it's 71, a little cloudy, on and off rain, but still nice. I'll take it. Well, hopefully our guy right here, Anthony Sapato Jr., he's a Tampa guy. It's a little Tampa, a little Australia. Um, did you know of Anthony? I yeah. don't see you would know that. You did? Yeah, my mom was big into uh, General Hospital when I was growing up. General Hospital, some people are going to get mad at me saying this, is like the (laughs) SNL of soap operas. And what I mean by that is, out of all the soap operas, everyone knows General Hospital. I mean, that's one. But that's that's just a tip of his iceberg. This guy's been around. Let's just get to him. Let's get to Anthony Sabato. It's Jr. Antonio, what? by the way. Antonio. Antonio! How dare I? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey, do I say your last name right? Sabato Jr.? Sabato? Sabato. 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 You're like the real. No, not Sabato. You're like Antonio <laughs> Sabato Jr. That's the real deal. Dean Martin playing in the background. Gravy or sauce? Yeah. Uh, sauce, not gravy. Ah, gravy is on the mashed potatoes. Sauce is on the pasta. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Gravy. No, Come on. No, no stop. Um, you live in Tampa. I do. When did you move? I do live in when did you move to Tampa? When I realized that living in California wasn't good enough. Uh, a few years ago, I I, I, um, I left what five years ago or something like that. So you left right before the pandemic. Yeah, I did. I did. Thank God, I did. Yes. I don't want to call it a pandemic. It's more like owning the American people. Here, do what I tell you to do and do it right. Otherwise, you're done. You will no, do whatever. what we ask you because this is all for the safety of your life and for right. the uh, health of yeah. yourself and uns everyone yeah. around you. Yeah. How do you, right. do you ever, like what you just said, did you ever, mm-hmm. do you put those things out there? Because that's something I do. If I say that again, I'm sorry, Antonio. I do. If you know, if they ask me, I'll, I'll give them my opinion. I mean, we still have that freedom to a certain degree, but yes, you don't want to get in trouble because you'll shut you down. If you disagree with the system or you disagree with the matrix, you, you, you disagree with the government, any disagreement with people they disagree with in higher places, you're done, man. I mean, they're going to, they're going to make sure they shut you down. No, I know. They're going to try. I know, but why I found because you're still acting, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're still doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You're still doing what you're doing. Now you you also, I mean, you filmed you filmed a lot and yeah. you filmed a lot in Australia. I will be. I mean, I um that's a big market for me. So I'm actually heading down to Australia in a few weeks to do some stuff out there. And I used to work there a lot. So uh now that Australia is open again to a certain degree, I guess you can fly out there. I'm, uh, I'm going to go there and check out some producers and some projects that uh, they want me for. So pretty exciting. That is pretty exciting. And I know, and I know, so would it, would it, at this point in career, I mean, you, what, what is, what goes next for you? Like, what do you, what are you thriving to do on your, uh, what, what, it, what is producing, directing, well, uh, or just, Stick all the above. I mean, it, it the craft is so uh, so huge right now. You can do kind of everything, but if you really dedicate it and 
you guess you surround yourself with good people, good scripts, you know, people that know what they're doing. You can, you can do some good work. You know, I have a good movie. I have a great film that's coming out in June in the theaters called Grace by Night, that I'm very proud of because it's one of the films that I, I mean, it's probably the best work that I ever done. So I'm very proud to, to be part of this film and um, it's coming out. So it, it took me a little bit of time to produce a film, to do something like this. And we finally did it. So it's going to be out in June. So when it, can I just pick your brain? Um, yeah. When buddy. it comes to producing, right? So yep. when you say you're producing it, is this you? How, what, what is the whole process? What is what is your role? Because there's multiple. Producing is uh, you're in control to a certain degree of the project. You own part of the project, uh, you know, and um, you have a lot to say. You know, you, you have a lot to say in things like you know when the movie's going to be released, you know, or. If you have some issues with the film while you're shooting it, you have more to say. Um, you you have more creative and producing, and also about raising the money if you need to raise money or if you need to uh, be in control. Yeah. I mean, producing is pretty much one of the captains of the ship, so right. you you have a lot more responsibilities. But you also, you know, when the project turns out to be as good as this one, uh, you can walk away with so, so much more too as well. Why is this one so more special to you? Is it because it's kind of your baby and kind of you, you steered the ship rather than just re, rather than ch taking a role, yeah. reading lines? I don't know. It's, it's hard to, you know, actors don't really, I mean, sometimes you go after projects because, you know, you're auditioning and you're going after projects because they're being offered to you or whatever. But this project was was a film that I always wanted to do since I first read it. Um, and I wanted to be part of it. It was very challenging for me as an actor. So I wanted to be, you know, so sometimes you want to fight for those things that kind of want to establish you to be a, a better actor, a better performer. And, and, and the story alone, it was just in the director that I was working with, um, everything came together. And, um, and usually in a smaller budget films like this one, this is an independent film, you have you have a lot more creative stuff so you don't have studios you know telling you what to do every second or changing things changing the script a million times we we were ready the script was was good to go so um all we had to do was just shoot it so what what is your what's your ideal role that you haven't played yet a race car driver you know because i race professionally i i, I uh, my father was a race car driver before me and my family is all about race car drivers and, and, and just being on the, on the racetrack every day since I was a little boy. So I always want to, my father made the greatest race car movie of all time called Grand Prix, which won three Academy Awards back in 66. But I always wanted to make a, a real truthful F1 movie, uh, which has never been done except Grand Prix ever. So, um, I'm passionate about racing. So I, I would love to do something like that. Wow. So now you, uh, so, so you, I love racing. So you grew up in the racing world. So your dad's a yeah. racer, which I my uncle's a racer, my cousin is a racer. <laughs> like the whole family, the whole family is a, either, a race. Yeah, my mother races everywhere. My yeah, my sister. Too. I mean, like we we love racing since I was a little boy. I grew up in Italy, and and we either watch soccer or racing. Formula One is all we do. I mean, now Formula One is in America and all that good stuff and actors are talking about it. But back in the day, when I moved here in 1985, nobody followed Formula One. I did. because <laughs> it's, it's Now everybody's talking about Formula One, but it took a little bit of time for Formula One to be popular in America. And now it is, but I'm glad it is. But it took a little bit of time, many, many years. It did It did take a little time. Do you think, and and why is that? Is, that, is it basically, you think because it was, backed by oh, the money or or like what what yeah good well formula one is very much a, t a technical type of sport and it's it's a combination of things race car driver and team and uh you got it's, it's a very complex sport if you think about it. it's the highest tech for cars and technology that we ever seen before and also back in the day drivers never really talked to anybody and you have all these european drivers yeah. that uh, you know they speak english and all but we never really have, I and mean, we still don't even have, we only have one American driver in F1 right now, and he's not doing very well. So, but now they changed it. Uh, the marketing has changed. They made it more available for fans to see these drivers, get to know them and the sponsors and all that. So they made it more fun. So that's more, it's more watchable and it's more glamorous yes, now, but yes. it's still Americans don't understand the Formula One 
circuit. You know, they, they see Max Verstappen, you know, the Formula One champion winning all the time. And they go, oh, he's winning all the time. It's not fair. Well, it takes more than that. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more complex than that to, to win a race. And what he's doing is pretty, uh, uh, pretty amazing. So you kind of have to explain it. Yeah. And back in the day, you know, like, was it 10 or 20, whenever I talked about Formula One, I was hired by Tony George at Indianapolis. Uh, when it was coming back to Indianapolis, I was I was going in the Midwest talking to NASCAR drivers about Formula One. That was tough, man. It was like talking to uh, people from another country. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't really get it across the way, but it took I took I took a little bit of time. But now finally, <laughs> I, that's coming. Kind of, it's very complex. They don't get it. They you see Americans they want scoring. They they big on bigger and better. Right? Yes, so I want numbers on the board. I want to see like. You know, like Dana White talking about soccer. There's only three scores, you know, like three goals, and that's not enough, right? But it takes 45 minutes each half to run around this field to score one goal, which, you know, it's complex. Americans want score, points, now, get it, now, get me out of the way, you know? And <laughs> they, and they want sometimes. violence. They want violence. They want violence. Yes. They want crashes. Yes. They want hit the car. Yeah, they want all. in Formula One. You can't hit anything because if you hit anything, you're done. You're done. You're not gonna. Fit. You're done. It's carbon fiber. It's the highest tech cars. They weigh like fifty pounds each. It's like they're <laughs> airplanes on the ground. You know? And uh, so you got to explain the technology and the sport, and, which takes a lot. And they're bored. You know, they're kind of. I know. Crashes. That that the yeah. Fire. See, and that's also like you came up with that, and you understand it, and you uh, and then. It, totally it's hard to it's hard to let other people understand something like that. They just it's yeah, because America is fast, bro. I gotta go. I gotta watch the game. I gotta get my drinks. I got in my popcorn. I got in my hot dog. I gotta, I gotta go home. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is, man. There's no time for patience here. I gotta see my game. Give me, you know. No, it's I frantic. Know. I know. I know. It's craziness to the max. Um. <laughs> Family stiller, excuse me for asking, father no, passed on. My father passed away. He's in, he's in heaven right now. God bless him. He's behind me somewhere. Yeah, yeah my, he's with my dad too. Yeah. They're having a beer or, yeah. or a limoncello or something. They're definitely hanging out talking about racing. It's it's talking about racing. My dad's going, what now? Wait, wait, explain that again to me. So I, oh, yeah, yeah, I, watch I watch that. I watch that. I do that. I do that. <laughs> um, so when did you... When did you get the bug for to like start? Well, did you do modeling first or did you do? No, everybody thinks that I actually was a model, but I wasn't. I was always an actor in my, you know, we moved to this country. I just wanted to be an actor since I was a little boy. And then um, through the process of career. Well, well before, before stuff, you even get into that, what, why was it a certain actor? Was my father was an actor and growing up in Italy, my father was a big time actor and I just, it was in the blood. You know, I, I watched movies since I was a little kid. I enjoy watching films. I always wanted to be part of these American movies someday. And then we found out we were moving to this country, you know, and I was like, Oh, maybe I can go to schools there and I can go to the, I was very knowledgeable of, um, you know, the Stella Adler, the acting studio, yes. all these things, you know? And so I actually went to all of them, you know, when I, I was a teenager, Moving to Los Angeles, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the acting schools and learn the language. I didn't speak the language, you know, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to follow my father's footsteps and uh, and go to the best schools, you know, at least the schools that I that I heard the Brando went to. I went to the school that you know, and I had some teachers that that taught these people. So uh, I worked my way from the ground up. And who, what, what, you, what's your movies? You're two or three, like it's not going up because that's another thing. Do you even want, it's so hard for an actor yeah, uh, or, or like a comedian. It's so hard for me to watch yeah. just comedy in general because I'm trying to figure out the science the whole time and what's driving the person. Oh, it's got to be tough, I, man. To make people laugh is the hardest thing ever, my friend. I mean, you, you're in the toughest, toughest thing ever. To, I think it's easier to make people cry. Oh, God. To make people laugh. That's by far the hardest thing is to make people laugh. I I, I, I agree with you. But if we like. And I try to laugh. Like when, when somebody's laughing comfortably, like that's a funny joke. 
and and I'm out of my own comfort zone and I'm laughing with you, whatever. It's it's hard. Very difficult. It's also a good feeling to get someone out of that. So it's, it's also kind of an icebreaker yeah. if everyone's all in on yeah. it. So what is your, what's your ultimate movies? Who's your, who, what is your, oh my God, here's my, here's Antonio's bing, bang, boom, Mount Rushmore. Do you have one? Do you have the a one that I, the, the, This movie that I was telling you about, Grace by Night, is really the one that, it's gonna, I think, help me and catapult me to the next level when they're gonna say, "Wow, this guy can really do it," because I seen it, I produced it, like I said, I, I, uh, and I know when something is good, you know. And I, I, you could do a lot of bad movies, but it takes one good one to kind of showcase your talent. This is, and, and it's not just you; it's yeah. it's the whole team. It's the, the actor, I the know. story, how it's shot, the music. It's the whole thing, you know. So this one is a good one. And I'm just so proud of it. I mean, I've made other films that I'm proud of. Don't get me wrong. I've done I've done sure. hundreds some movies, but this one is the one that it moved me. It moves people. It's very motivational. It's it reminds me of like the first Rocky. You know that 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 kind of raw talent from everybody in a very simple but dramatic story yeah. about life and 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 consequences and rebuilding somebody's life mm. and motivational film and all that. So. um yeah, Grace by Night is something that I'm very proud of. I think this one will, I think will will show me in a different light. All right. Now, what are you doing when you're not acting? I'm uh, doing a lot of things. I'm uh, testing cars if I'm racing. Uh, like I said, I, I am. I want to race professionally, and I want to get back into. Uh, I love that. You know, I would love to go in 24 hour Le Mans. That's one of my dreams. I raced at Indianapolis. I raced at other tracks around the world, but there's few of them that I want to finish and be part of, and Le Mans will be one of them. Monte Carlo will be another one, racing the Porsche Cup Series. I'm also in real estate. I'm a real estate agent. I so saw I, that. I, have, uh, uh, I saw that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm selling some big uh, units out here in Tampa. Um, so I'm doing all kinds of things, but uh, now, now I'm traveling. I have a book coming out, uh, which is going to be coming out, what, next week, everywhere? Yeah. So about my life story and coming to this country and stuff like that. So. Yeah, you, staying busy you as much as I can. You stay but How old are you? 52. Just turned 52. Lord. Five, two, baby. I know. Antonio, did you, get, you got kids? I do. I have three beautiful kids. Yeah. Right. And aren't, so aren't they, are they out of the house yet? They're out of the house, right? You are out of the house. One is still in the house. Yeah, we're, we're, we are a little Ours bit. was out. One came back. One came back. One, one limp. They came back for the right reasons or came back for money? What do they always come back for? Um, money. Yeah, it's, uh, Ronald, I'm trying to figure it out. Food, money, bills. <laughs> I mean, what else? And she, <laughs> she, well, she left. She did a whole run. She, um, yeah. She lived in New Zealand for a little while, trying to figure it out. Then she went to, oh, yeah. Then she went to Australia. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those. A lot of the young people are now going, I'm just getting a backpack and I'm going to figure it out. Oh, okay. Which, I'm gonna figure which it out. I admire because people like yourself, especially born in another country. Yeah. We, we get to see when you travel to the country, you get to see all different cultures, all different news and all different ideas. And you don't realize how yeah. you think people think the U S is so, uh, I don't know what the word for it, but uh, a uh, we know it all. And we're the greatest, and blah blah blah. But you really, they really. If you never left here, you really have zero, zero knowledge of true, like real culture and what goes on, what other people see, even Absolutely. and even history. Yeah. How everyone sees history, like what we're taught in history compared to what Italy's taught in history, how we saw World yeah. War II compared to what Italy saw with, and, or, or um, Australians, you know? Yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate because everything should be the same and it should be thought the same, you know, history especially. You know, I, you know, I grew up, you know, with my family and talking about World War II, you know, my great-grandparents were taken to Auschwitz and killed there, you know? They, they were uh, my mother's grandparents uh, and my and my grandmother was the only survivor during World War II. So I, I know, and my mom was born in Prague. So I, we, you know, my, my family from my mother's side, we had to deal with 
the Germans, yep. the Nazis, yep. the Communist Party right after that. Yep. You know, the taking over by USSR and the Communist Party. And my grandmother was killed by Russian soldiers later on. I mean, we it talks. I talk about all these stories in the book. And most people say, well, it's fascinating. Well, it's, listen, if you, if you live through socialism, my friend, you have no idea. Especially you talk about this country. People have to talk about socialism and you, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> if somebody comes at your door right. and knocks at your door and says, listen, give me everything you have and there's nothing you can do about it, then you can change your mind about socialism at that point. You know what I mean? And it's starting to be that way because, mm. you know, talk about freedom. I mean, this country is not as free as it used to be. Like, we're not free to say whatever we want. We're not, we don't have no freedom in this country. No. We don't. If you say something. No. disagree with like we we're going back to the beginning of the interviews yeah. and were you asking me if you cross over and you upset some people in my industry you know casting directors or producer people with high places they can give you jobs they won't hire you it's not free it's not about your job it's about as long as you stay in your lane you don't talk politics definitely never talk trump never talk oh, trump oh, don't, cast don't dare office. say like, that word you know, <laughs> you know it's like you're done and so, so it's not free no, it's, it's not, not free. free. It hasn't been free for quite a while. It's just I think people are now just recognizing that, you know, for years and years. I hope so. I, I, hope, so. I, I hope so, too. Um, it's funny. I'm actually going to Tuscany this year for the first time. Nice. One of my favorite places. Where? I don't know. I got I, I, I got to go drive around. Yeah, but I got I got a villa and I was thinking about bringing yeah. my fit. So I got a villa. And I can, yep. I don't know the exact, I know it's on a hill and it's a gorgeous little valley. All hills, and so I think. Well, you're going to go to Rome, right? And then you're going to drive, you're going to get in a car and go to Tuscany. Yes. And then spend yes. time there. At this, and then you're going to go to all the little villages and towns around. Like you can go to Siena. Yes. Florence. Yes. Right. Yes. You can go to Bologna. Yes. You can go to all these places, and they're amazing. Yeah, yes. that's that's the best way. To it's do funny it. because I grew up with all Italians, Antonio. So there's part of me that. Oh yeah. Yes. So from where? Long Island, Valley Stream, Long Island. Oh, all right. So okay. So okay. It was Campo and Esposito. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of this. There was a lot. Yeah. So everyone I grew up with, uh, Iatelli, um yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah, me and my dad both. My dad was like, uh, I shouldn't compare it to Goodfellas, but like he was the Jimmy. In good. We were, we were not like we were, we got the Irish in us, so we're not a hundred. We we can't all we can't. We got Irish and Italian. Yeah, so we can't. I'm not a. We're, there's no Italian blood in me. Zero. You're all Irish. No Irish, German, and a speck of French. Um, Brewer, Breuer, B R E U, Breu. Which I didn't know until I went to Germany and I was checking in and they took yeah. my passport and they're like, oh, James Breuer. I went, nah, it's Brewer. I went, nah, nah, you are Breu. I'll tell you why you are the Breu. You are B R E U. The U and E is Oi. You are Breuer. You are something from Germany. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they were so convicting i was like yeah. yeah they want to make sure you know it yes i was like you're right i'm i'm a don't you ever change it again <laughs> right <laughs> um but the reason why i brought that up is never in my life have i thought about living in another country and right. it's the first time in my lifetime and i shouldn't say this was before covid yeah once covid hit now yeah. really really want to size somewhere else um but pre That's right <laughs> uh you talk about the covid uh the covid uh, cold flu uh fiasco yeah the what i call yeah. takeover um takeover. the world the, man, the mind though, taking over the mind of a human being to say you're not a human anymore you're an animal correct pretty and you're sheep it was a so, it was a great so. world. Um, it, it's amazing I mean, if we're gonna go here. Um, Why not? That is the first time where I also understood history, meaning yeah. people say like, "Oh, you know, how did this happen? Or uh, how did the Germans do it?" Well, duh. Exactly like that. It was that. It was that simple. I had family going. Um, 
hey, now that we're vaccinated, we, we're, we're going to New York City and da, da, da. And, and I went, and that doesn't bother you? It doesn't bother you. You need to be, you show a card. So if you show a card, but you could sit outside without the card and you can go to the mm -hmm. bathroom without the card. As long, but if you right. have the card, you could sit inside and it, and, and like, well, rules are rules. I mean, and, but that rules and one of the yeah, it's. I, I know people that came from Germany during yeah. during that World War Two time that also yeah. were like, well, you know, you need to get vaccinated I'm like. This is the yeah. this is the greatest voodoo trick in human history, and and just the greatest act. It really the greatest. It really was, and it it kind of really altered so much about my existence and how I saw everyone else's existence. It really. Uh, so then I start. If they can do that once, my friend, and they can oh. really do it. Oh. The, the, I mean, they had the whole world in their hands. For a period of time where everybody was stuck, you know, wearing the mask, getting the boosters, getting this and this and that. And all of a sudden now I still see to this day, I still see those people walking around with the mask yeah, I know me too. going, you know, and, and it's 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 to a point of no return where, you know, we became from human beings with something attached to their to their to the to this head uh, to blankness animals. What? What was more um, sad to me was how much they invest in that thought process. Meaning, yeah, yeah. Meaning, you you are so wrong, and not only wrong. Like, I I still get messages. You know, those come see a show, and not, it'll be one or two people didn't realize what I'd be talking about. And I'll get a message right. like, "You you know, you mur people are dying, murdering, and but and." It's not just disagreement. It's pure hate. It's pure like they can yes, they can hate. go violent like that during that period. Yeah. If if CNN uh, and all them because they were already shaming and you know you're the oh, yeah. you're the issue you're the problem if you're not vaxxed. they were probably what about those actors? If I remember those actors. They were publicly saying, you know, I'm not even going to mention their names, but you know who they are. Oh, I know. And they were saying. You show up to work without a mask. If you're not vaccinated, if you don't get vaccinated now, you're, you you deserve nothing. You deserve nothing. No, no jobs, no life. You basically go and stay at home for the rest of your life unless you're vaccinated. Never come around me. I mean, where are they? Where are they now? Knowing that it was all a fiasco, and it was all to create, you know, this this whole thing about control the world. We control everyone. We control the world. We control the future. So what about now? Where are they now? Where are they now? And, you know, also with that, I don't think, um, I think a lot of the world, a lot of people woke up and they are, oh they are definitely on the <laughs> list of they're canceled to us. Meaning people like me, if I see a certain individual speak, I got asked to come to a VIP event for the band Kiss. They're playing Madison yeah. Square Garden. I wanted to mm -hmm. write a letter and go, I, if you offered me $20 million, I wouldn't go because of that pig, in my opinion, that pig, the disgrace to humanity, Gene, Gene Simmons, or whatever's real, he was very cool. whatever his real he was name very is. Cool. He was, uh, he basically said, I'm an enemy. I'm the I'm the I'm the issue. I'm the problem. So did the president. The president said the same thing. Um, and yeah. that that's that's the thing that drives me nuts where people I, I talked with a guy and he's like, you know, I'm a big kiss fan. I'm like, I'm not like, why not? Well, the things he said. Oh, yeah. And they ruined it because, you know, we have some actors who we, we you know, I'm sure that we watch. I know it. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. You know who they are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so they, they came out and they were so vulgar. And aggressive, and and I guess I don't even want to call it passionate because at least if you're passionate, you understand it. But it was craziness. And then I don't even watch their movies anymore. Me either. I can't because it reminds me, me either. of how they were and how they really are sometimes too to this day. If you ask them certain questions and they're on the talk show and you get them on that question, they'll still answer the same way as they did before. I, I know. Even though everything happened. I know. So it's it, it, 
And so I look at it and go, these guys are crazy. And the people that follow them are crazy because they're saying, jump off a cliff and then you're going to be with us. And you're like, oh, I don't want to jump off the cliff. I don't feel good jumping off this cliff. There's rocks. I'm going to die. Look, and so, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It, it, it's got to be a place of, of craziness where human beings should be standing up for what is truthful and honest and makes sense, like common sense. I was asked the other day, what do you miss about the past? Common sense. That's what I missed about the past. Because in the past, if we had a disagreement, but at least you found the truth on the table, you're like, that's the truth. I can't disagree with you. Now you say there's three or four genders. I can't talk to you anymore because there's only two, but you're saying there's three or four or five or six. So now you want me to agree with nonsense. So, and they get upset and they get violent if you disagree with them. So now we're dealing with the clockwork orange where we have to get their eyes open and go, let's start from scratch. You're crazy. You need to get back on the ride. <laughs> right? I mean, it's insanity. Well, here's what I don't understand. When you see a guy, the certain actors that said, they, I only said one name and that's why I'm comfortable with that name. Um, when you when you saw the way they said what how they said it, yeah. <laughs> all I can think about there's no there's no way they believe it. This talent tell me they're getting a paycheck. They have to be you getting would think that. That's right. You would think that have there is a, like a circle, and so the, the the managers and the agents they're all like this like this satanic place, right? And they all get the same call, and they say, listen, today. You got to talk about this, this, and that, but you have to disagree with all this, okay? Yes. A, B, C, and D, all right? If you fail, you're never going to work in Hollywood again. Hung up. I mean, it's got to be a, a tough point of that degree because, or otherwise, they're completely sheep and they go, okay, whatever Barbara Streisand says, whatever Jimmy Kimmel says, you do exactly as they say and don't ever disagree with any of them, please. Otherwise, you'll never work ever. Like, not even like acting, whatever. None of the jobs you'll never work in your life. And that, and that, that, and that alone is what I don't think the public still understands when you talk about socialism, communism, dictatorship. That is actually it. It's here. Because it's here. Oh, it is. We're in it right you know, now. We used, to look at, we used to look at people in the industry and go, okay, I admire this person because of the work that he or she has done. And I appreciate it. now, like you, it's, it's gone to a place of no return. Like if you don't agree with everything that they're actually saying in their private life, then you're out of the circle. And all of a sudden you're, you're, you're called the bigot and all these other names that come with it, blah, 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 blah. And you're out of the box. Right. Instead of like, we used to be so much smarter. What's going on in this world? What are they feeding them? What's going on in the food? What's happening here? Because now I, they're promoting eating bugs, but I want to eat a steak from a cow that has been eating grass on the, but no, they want me to eat bugs. I mean, like you have all these actors talking about this powder bugs and all this other stuff. I mean, we can talk about this nonsense about one after the other and nobody wants to talk about reality anymore. No, Like they don't want the reality's out of the ordinary. Let's just, just believe what I have to say. I'm like, no, I don't believe it because it makes no sense. It makes, it makes no sense at all. It really <laughs> makes zero sense whatsoever. Ever. It's mind boggling. Now it's craziness. Craziness. I wanted to ask you a question. And you don't have to you don't have to answer. Um, I'll answer anything. I wonder sometimes if and you've been, I mean, you've been around the best of the best, and you've been on some of the biggest sets, and and I wonder if when pe like when people make it. Right. Then then they start really building you up. I remember just with me and when things started going and then the the, the Asian crowd gets a little bigger. Um, mm -hmm. Magic. Public, d d d next thing you know, you got a yep. gang around you. Yeah. And they're kind of and and I call it the rock star event. I call it the rock star mm -hmm. syndrome, meaning if you're 18, 19, you become a rock star. You don't know what reality is because you have five people. Okay, get off yeah. the book. Come this way. Oh, yeah. Eat that. Drink that. Okay, now go up and do this. Okay. All right. Come on. Here's what we need. Chicks, bring the chicks. Let's go. Bang, bang. We need snort. Okay. 
Let's rock and roll. All right. We'll see you in two months. Don't die because you guys are worth a lot of money and blah, blah, blah. And so yeah. Yeah. I wonder sometimes if some of these people, once they're in that world, they lose all their common sense. And as they get more popular, more popular, more popular, they just lost all touch reality. And that's what's controlling them. Or, as you know, I found out in our industry, you got to join a gang eventually. And what I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yeah, and you do, and you know what I mean. You, 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 you yeah. there's, there's separate gangs to join. You, there's separate gangs. Yeah, you're either gonna join yeah. this gang. Um, mm -hmm. there was one gang that I would feel comfortable with, but when I say comfortable with. I don't know. What. To a certain degree. Huh? To a certain degree. To a certain degree. You're comfortable to a certain degree. But then when they, talk, they start talking nonsense, all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to be part of this conversation, but the ones you had before, I'm okay with that one, but not everything else. Right. I got you. Right. And yeah. then there's the other yeah. wacky ones and dark ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sexual ones. Many, many mm -hmm. gangs. Uh, yeah. And. Truth. It's if you don't, I discovered a long time ago, it's like a contractor. I, I, I always compare mm -hmm. it to a contractor. You know, my, gran mm -hmm. my grandfather was a contractor and he was in the village in New York and he could only reach a certain point be before others come along and threaten him. You're either going to yeah. do this and give us that or you're going to have serious issues. And... Right. I think that's every single industry. However, I think the acting industry is by far one of the biggest and non known. Uh, not, not like the general public has no clue. Uh, how Listen, Satan is in Hollywood right now. There's no question. You got to have a faithful guidance or something, something that some brings you joy that is faithful related because I know what if I mean. you don't, if you don't, the dark side is going to take over you. It's just like star Wars, the dark side. It's, That's it's really is your dignity goes out the door. You're being controlled by all these people. The manager tells you to do something. You got to do it. Don't wear your cross anymore. Don't talk about God. Don't talk about family. Don't talk about guns because the second amendment, then you're a patriot. Then you, you know, don't, just do what I tell you to do and do it by these by this code and follow exactly what Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and all these people are doing and don't disagree with them at all about anything. I agree and disagree with the, with Trump, just whatever Trump is saying, hey, just point the finger and kill him. Right. Just destroy everything that they, they're saying. Whatever. As long as you do that, you're good. See, now this is interesting. I want to, I want to, do you have a, do you have a man or two? I already got you for like, I have all day. Okay. Man. Okay. Yeah, I saved so, for you. so two things I want to get into you with. All right. On the and the movie. When you did you watch when Ricky Gervais hosted you did the Globes? Yes, I did. One of my favorite moments ever. That was a perfect moment of a reality check. And all these people who live in clouds and rainbows and, and, and third dimensions or I don't know, whatever they live in at different planets, different Atmos, everything is different for them because it doesn't reflect with the rest of the, of the world. They live somewhere else mentally. I think it's up here in the head. Yes. So when he woke everybody up and said, you guys are the problem and said pretty much to everybody's face, like you guys are sick in the head. You should, you need help. And they're all like clapping and laughing and stuff. That was, that was the, the reality check of a lifetime. And of course he's never going to be asked again to come back. Um, but you're never going to have those moments as much and like going back to the past, the past where where people got up on stage, especially the Academy oh, Awards. Oh God! And there was there was a message of something. Even when Brando didn't show up, yes. and said, "Here, this is the lady. Free the Indians. Peace." At least there was a cause. There was a cause that the actor believed in and said, "I don't care about the Academy. I don't care. This is who I am." Blah blah blah. And in fact, he wasn't even working at the time. I mean, to get the Godfather. He had to like jump through fire hoops. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is that there was a purpose. There was a goal for actors. They were passionate about even Steve McQueen and Paul Newman. They had their thing right now. 
it's like, it's really nothing going on. It's like, uh, I'll talk about this and I'll talk about that because everybody else is talking about it in my circle, the one you were talking about. But really, I don't believe in it because my life is different. Yes. Like, I want to clean the world, right? Yes. But I have three private jets. I have homes on the beach. I have all these people working for me, but I want to help the planet. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Climate so change. You climate change. Do one or the other. You know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. You know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. I yeah. When I first, but I, when I first saw that one, and I, I want to say it was right around the COVID madness. Um, yeah. Yeah. I watched it going. Okay, he's either backed by some military. This guy. <laughs> this he's gonna get. He's gonna get whacked. He, he's. He's calling them pedophiles in front of their faces. And I, I, and he must know something because if he, if he's saying something like that and he was very serious about it, cause it wasn't just like one joke or two, it was the entire show. It was the whole thing. Uh, the entire show from beginning to end until closing. I think till the last thing he said, he pretty much said to them, like, you guys, are, you guys are this, this and that. Yep. And yep. I know who you are. Because you can't have all these stories go on about Hollywood such a long time without being true. Correct. And there is truth to that. I mean, they're sick in the mind. Look at the movies that they're producing. Look what they're, they're following. It's, you know, it's like it is a, a mindset that is owned by, you know, by Satan. That, at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. It is dark. It is Satan. It is. It all comes from the dark. It's the dark side, 100%. And I, I do think I'd love to see Sar, um, the newer, the, I'm waiting for films. So I'm excited about yours where we're going to have, we're going to start seeing just about life and about just, the truth just, right? and about nothing, the truth. nothing forced, nothing forced. I got to force to watch certain people making out. Not because they like each yeah. other, because they want this in front of your face. I got to be. It's a propaganda. That's right. It's like I was talking about this in a day and people were like, oh, they were attacking me. I'm like, but this is how it works. Hollywood has to have a TV show. Correct. It can't be just a normal TV show. It's got to have, you got to have the lesbian couple. Yes. You got to have the trans. Yep. You got to have the say, you got to have a, a, the black and the white, yep. the Asian. Eh? Yeah. All this other stuff. It's not about the story. It's not about the craft. It's not about what you're trying to as a thespian, as, as an artist. No, that's out the door Gone. because now they have all these rules at the Academy Awards. And I read them all, which is crazy to be nominated for an Academy Award, especially this year and next year. You got to follow all these rules on the production. Like if my movie that I'm producing doesn't have all these things that they're asking, yeah. it won't be nominated. It won't have a chance at all, period. So now I have to deal with distribution. I have to deal with raising more money because I won't go this route anymore because I won't be going to the film festivals. They're never going to take me unless I have all these rules, right. right? So now it's becoming about socialism plus 10 because right now, in, in the past, you knew what socialism looked like. That's they come right. to your door, like I said, they want everything from you. Now it's different. Now it's just small little details of things or contracts or things you got to do. And then they own you by the cojones and they go, okay, well, you can't finish the movie. You can't do this. You can't do that. But the world doesn't know all that. No, People in Hollywood would know that, but they won't have the guts to talk about it because if they do, then they'll be blacklisted and so forth. So it's, it's a very dangerous time. We live in it. It's, it's a dangerous time, but I also think it's um, exciting for a guy like you. And I won't, cause I won't say the in, I don't know if the word is the independence, but I'm waiting and I do believe yeah. the new age of the authentic being authentic. What you're going to do is authentic because yeah. you're not and you, gotta, and you gotta stand up for your values and you gotta right. stand up to a way where I think more people have to stand up. I think there's a certain crowd that is waking up and going, me too. I, I'm done with it. I'm sick of this stuff. I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to live my life. And I'm going to try to be as honest as I can with my life. Yeah. And I think that's great to see. But the next generation, the younger generation who is oblivion to everything, that's what's really scary because 
the Hollywood of today is trying to acquire all these young minds and like pretty much own them. You know, you own them, you mold them, you do exactly what you want them to be and, and see, and then you don't see the reality. You kind of live, live in this bubble, right? It's like putting the fish in that tank. And that's it. There's no ocean. There's no river. It's just that tank. And so that fish will only know about going around in circles and follow what the signs are telling him. Because, you know, right now we don't have the family value in our country gone. is gone. Gone. God is gone. God. The Ten Commandments are gone. Uh, you know, a man and a wife, a marriage, gone. So it's where do you find your honest truth? At least we have Ten Commandments. You should not kill. You should not, you know, betray your, your neighbor. You should not steal. All this other stuff. Now it's like, do whatever you want. Do whatever it's you want. Right. And Go it's for it. Go for yeah. it. Right. And it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Leave your wife after the second kid because you want to go there. It's all right. Yeah. Chop your- there's no God. There's no, there's nothing. There's all that is baloney, right? It's my, and so you, you, and that our country was based on Judeo Christian values of like in God, we trust, we have, we have it on our, on our money. We have it in it's like God is everywhere here, but now it's like, God is well, nowhere. Well, I have a, I started questioning a long time ago because to me, I, I learned a, just the dollar bill with the, the all seeing eye. <clears throat> and here's the voodoo trick. They use words. So you imagine, use your imagination and you think you're safe. So when we right. say in God, we trust what they're <laughs> lying about is what God are they referring to? Cause they don't exactly. define the God and this can be Satan. And I believe it is because if your God is about money, well then yes, that is, that's the, you're driven by money. That's, that's, that's Satan. You have now, you're not driven. It's the same thing with like what goes on right now. We had John Cena half naked or naked walking on stage. Ritual. All right. What was the point? Like, think about it. What was the point of putting John Cena naked to give an award? There's, there's nothing, there's nothing that makes sense at all, except there was a ritual. It was like, we're going to embarrass you. We're going to put you on stage. You know, we're going to set you on fire and people are going to go, Hey, it's great. He's burning alive. That's awesome. And, and, I'm like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It, it's it's people don't want to talk about the reality of what's really going on and so and the bible talks about it and i don't want to like be a preacher or anything but it, if you read something that tells you what's going on you want to follow that because it's actually going on like the mindset owning people owning the world putting the, the fakeness into, into the mind of the next generation so you can own them create this whole thing that doesn't make sense but still follow it wearing a mask you know, wearing a mask on the plane. Uh, we used to smoke on planes. There used to be Marlboro lights and smoking on planes with ashtrays, but now we're wearing a mask and we're having these shots given to us. And then if one doesn't work, take another booster. That doesn't work, take another one. But then people are dying in their sleep. All these actors are dying in their sleep and they go on a movie set. And then the next day we see it, like it's a normal thing. Yeah. We go on, on Twitter, we go on X, or we go on Instagram. The next one just passed away. Nobody's asking questions. Nobody. How, nobody. How did he die? How did she die? Oh, um, uh, nobody knows. She fell cancer. What cancer? Uh, she didn't wake up. I'm like, really? So all these people are dying in their sleep, like it's a normal thing in their 40s, in their 50s, where we should live to at least 130 by all the technology that we have. That's right. But people are dying like that, like that, and nobody's asking questions. So then you go, hmm. Something is not making sense out of this, that's, is it? So now I have to find my own truth because I can't trust these people. These people are nuts. They're crazy. So then you have to have your integrity in check and go, I'm going to follow what makes sense. And whatever doesn't, I am going to actually believe that that doesn't make sense. Call it conspiracy, call it whatever. But I'm going to make sense out of things that make sense. Everything else, I won't. I'm not crazy. I know you're not crazy. You know what I mean? Oh, like, we can't walk around I am not. No, I'm not crazy. They're crazy. They are crazy. <laughs> insane. I know. <laughs> and I don't mind saying it. You know, you know what I learned too, Antonio, is um, the simple fact of 
you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big church guy, but I listen. I'm a listener. I can't go there and do that, but I'll, you know, years ago, I'd listen to this guy or I'll listen to that or listen. To I do it was right. Charles Stanley. I used to like that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I would hear people, you know, you get the message like, oh, that's because they're Christian or that's because they're this. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're and you're like, oh, wow. OK, that's why they're so humble. Blah, blah. I never really understood the term. False idols. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, I think people. In today's society, they think the false idol is like the anti, you know, the antichrist is coming. The antichrist is coming. The antichrist is everywhere. He's already here. He's here. He's already it's here. it's it's the pop star that's shaking her ass and doing basically a uh, um, strip tease. It's that she's selling sex. She's selling this. She's selling that. It's uh, this yep. guy selling um, sodomy. It's this one. And they don't care. Like they, they don't, don't care. even care. Like, but we're talking about eating children and eating the blood of children for how many years, right? Until you see it with your own eyes, I'm like, this stuff has got to be happening somewhere because people are crazy. And then through all this whole process of children be eaten and the blood of children. Now they're talking about UFOs oh. and the balloon and the UFOs landing here and all this stuff in the sky, but nobody cares about that. Like they, I'm like, we got to a place like I, I have no idea what is going on anymore because I don't, I don't our border is open. You know, like listen to this. This is the, the the thing that really upsets me. Is like the government is making sure that our border is completely open, so everybody's coming in. Millions of people coming in here, right? Yep. Where's the COVID? Nobody's worrying about that anymore. I guess COVID is gone. Like I said, it's gone. So I'm actually right. And then they're giving these people rooms and food and all that. What about the millions of homeless people and veterans who are dying on our streets going? So basically all I had to do was go to Colombia, come here across the border, and I would get everything for free. But I'm an American citizen who fought for my country, and I got squat. Think of a, See what I'm saying? Think of a veteran. Think that went to Iraq or Afghanistan. Now think yep. of that child that had their legs completely blown off, came mm -hmm. home, lost his wife, family, drinks, blah, blah, blah. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them. And people just, yeah, you know, whoopsie daisy. Listen, my friend, I rounded the, the numbers up in New York City alone since the beginning of this. They call them migrants. They're illegal aliens who are breaking the law. OK, so these illegal aliens who are breaking the law and going to going to New York and getting free things. We as American citizens, you, me and everybody else who pay taxes has spent nine billion dollars in New York alone to have these people stay in hotels and ruin the entire Manhattan city. I tell nine billion. You know how much that is? We could solve homeless just with that right now. Nine billion. You give me a bag of nine billion dollars, I can solve the problem in the next 30 minutes. A hundred percent. I came here legally. I know about legal immigration, and I came to this country twice, and I earned my citizenship to be an American citizen from day one. I me and my family, just not myself and so many other millions of people. We have 1 million legal immigrants, legal who follow the book, coming to our country. And now we have millions who are breaking the law allowed by our government for a purpose, because it's not just they're breaking the law, they're allowing this to happen because this was not allowed before in the previous presidency, that was gone. That was not even a question. We had a, a border that was actually, you know, I asked, you know, I have these debates with these celebrities, so-called celebrities in Hollywood. Would you have a stranger come to your door, come in your house, go in your refrigerator, take everything, sleep in your bed, kick you out of your own house? Would you be okay with it? Because that's what's happening right now to our country. Correct. Our country, when I came to 1985 to America, we had at least a country where that flag, that military, 
everything about this nation was something you took pride in. That's right. Like you love. Right. You don't have to be in the military That's right. to respect the military. You don't have to be a cop right. to respect a police officer. There are certain things that you really, we want to win. We go to the Olympics. We want gold medals. We're number one. This is the mentality of that American citizen. They were like, we're never going to lose. Now, this whole woke agenda, this whole, you know, men are not men, men are weak, the genders and all this other stuff is to control it, to make the man weaker. Because once we don't have no men around who are going to fight, who are going to take care of things, who are going to build, you know, we're done. We're done. We're done. We got as a country, man. No, we got, we're done. We got taken out from the inside. And another thing yeah. that a lot of people do not know. which I highly suggest everyone look up. I'm not the guy to trust with this statement and I'm not, and I'm not blaming the citizenship where they live. Mm -hmm. Our, all our media, a lot of mm -hmm. our media, a lot of mm -hmm. big, important media, people, false, all of them, false much. idols that you trust. Also, mm -hmm. our government, Republican, Democrat, the whole professional yeah, yeah, wrestling yeah. team, have yeah. dual citizenship mm -hmm. in another country. And yep. if that yep. country was Italy, we'd go, hey, mm -hmm. you know what? This is, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah. We should not have Italians in here. If that if that dual citizenship was, I don't know, Mexico, you think everyone be cool? Because it had, if, if we don't even, and I'm not even going to say where the dual citizenship is, but when that, I'm sorry, but if I lived here in Italy, I'm not going to give you information about anyone who's against Italy. I'm going to say, I'm going to always going to be pro Italy, pro Italy, pro Italy. And, and it's going to be in my movies. It's going to be in my media. It's going to be in the news. Uh, the CDC also has a lot of individuals from the same territory. And I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm not blaming this territory. I just find this incredible information that people don't know. The UN, yeah. the UN Owns the book. Why doesn't anyone know that? Why doesn't anyone know that these? Because they're all, they're all about social media, what's happening today, and then tomorrow's going to be forgotten. TikTok's you private. Know? That's and why they, they That's why they can't control it. They're yeah. losing their minds. They, they move to the their next minds. thing. You know? it's, yeah. And, they, and they, never, they never stick to it because it's like a storyline. It's like a soap opera storyline. One week for this, two days for this. Right. Let's move on. Right. Let's move on. Right. And let's not stick to it until, but instead of, you know, what we used to do as a country was, okay, let's stick to this problem and let's fix it. Hmm. Once it's fixed, we can move on to the next problem. But no, there's a thousand problems and none of them are fixed. And then we're going to go to the next, the next, the next. So by the end of the day, you have all these issues that you never even fix because nothing is fixable anymore. It's go to the next, go to the next yeah. Until it's propaganda and stuff like that. And let's make everything weaker. Let's own the people. Let's create more problems because these, all these problems that we see in the world right now are created. They're created. By the, by the, they're created. All created. It's not, you know, like the moon and the sun and all. No, it's created by humans yes. who control everybody else. Right. And as long as they control it, uh, they keep changing it. They do whatever they want. It's good. It's, it's madness. Complete. Madness. madness. I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I don't know what's coming. I don't know how it's going to go down. I don't know. I don't get emotionally tied to it anymore. I just sit. What was John Lennon? I'm just sitting here watching the wheel go round and round. <laughs> and, and I, I'll be the first one to say I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I don't even, I, I never anymore. voted. That last yeah. election, there's no way this man. Well, there's no. No, it was a stolen election. There's Everybody knows. No it. way. I remember the next. No day, way. My friend, the next day when 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 Biden supposedly won, and I talked to the Democrats no the next day, I'm like, and I looked at them, and they were like, "Did he win?" 
You didn't even know because you never voted for him in the first place. I can say I voted for Trump because I was proud to go vote for Trump because yeah. he was my guy. He yeah. was going to win. Yeah. He was ahead of the votes. That's right. And he was going to clean this place up again. That's right. But you that said, oh, Biden is my president. I'm glad he won. You didn't even vote for him. And I know you didn't vote for him because you were so scared he was going to lose so bad. You didn't even step out and vote for the guy. And most of them didn't. But then you were surprised and like, oh, he won. How the heck did he win? How? Because they stole an election and going to try it again now. And there was no way he got that many votes because to this day, I'm telling you, to this day, a lot of the Democrats, they're like, I didn't even vote for the guy. He's crazy, and especially now. Now the guy is completely gone. I don't think it's him. He, now he's not going to vote for him at all. I don't think it's him at all. I don't. Th I. I haven't been saying it here, and I've been saying it about it. I, it's not him. That's not the Joe Biden of five, six, seven years ago. The guy we see right now. That I'm sorry. Call me crazy. Call him. me lunatic. That is not Joe. No, Biden. that's not him. And, and you say conspiracy. I'm no, who that call is. me crazy all you want. You're crazy, no, you're crazy if you think that's Joe Biden. You're a full-blown no, lunatic if you think that. And everybody who's going for it in his administration, everybody who's met the guy and this and that, everybody knows it's all a big farce. It's like an act. It's like a showcase. And I don't know how long they, they're going to keep going. They're going to keep going. got to give him credit. I remember. Like, they'll, they'll jump. They'll jump over, like, the cliff into the rocks and go, oh, I'm going to have a safe landing. What is your theory on why they went after Trump so hard? I know my theory. Well, my, my, I know why they went. They're still doing it, and they can't succeed because he will ruin the party. It's like there's a big party, and all these people have credit cards, and they have maximum level to spend. Right. They can spend. They can do whatever they want worldwide. They can have fun going left and right and do everything, genders and sex change and attack the children. You want to have a sex change at 10 years old? No problem. Go for it. All this stuff. Trump stands in the way of all that and go, the party's over. You can't spend anymore. You're completely insane yep. and you deserve to go in asylum. That's why they don't have asylums anymore. When's the last time you saw an asylum in our country? They're all gone and destroyed because they know that the crazies are running this country into the garbage can. Yep. They're all there. All the nuts people, the most like, you know, clockwork orange. I mean, we're talking about, you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. That's right. They're all in D.C. right now. <laughs> you know, you think, He's you know, you think, clean it. You know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's, it's because nobody can stand up for themselves and go, this smells like, you know what? It looks like, you know what? But I'm not going to treat it like roses. But that's what they do in Hollywood. They treat it like roses. I remember one manager of mine, you know, when I, when I, when I was blacklisted years ago, all left. But before I used to have these these things about, you know, California, you got all these taxes, you got to pay for water, you got to pay for all this, right? And they're like, no, it's, they're going to clean the, da, da. now California is to a place of no return. Yeah, that's good. And I remember when the, these people got ready to sell their properties and all of a sudden they looked on the paper and they're like, why do I have to pay all these taxes? Why do I have to pay this tax? Why do I have to pay this luxury tax? Oh, now you see it. Now, now you see, you see it. Yes. Now you see it. It's your money. It's your pocket that they're taking. And it makes no sense, does it? Now it, it's too late. It's too late. Because you voted for these people to take over your entire house. You volunteered. You, you volunteered. Yeah, you know, you're the guy. You're the woman who volunteered for all this. You volunteered. So well, that's where we're at right now. And it's sad to see. But I believe that I think we're worth more than that. And I think that even it, at a smaller scale, as long as we keep growing with people with common sense yeah. and using their brain and following what is right, I think we will be able to win this election and get Trump in office where we can clean the trash and actually bring some sort of dignity back to our country. At least we can start that. We shall see. And I will say this. This is why a guy like yourself in my opinion, just steers his own boat and does so well. You come from a tight, you come from a tight family. Yeah. You started off with your dad. You had a solid family. You had a solid father figure. No disrespect to your mom. My mother. Your mom is no, but huge. I had a family that was. We came together. You know, we lost everything. We came together. We stick together as a family. But our country used to be like that. our country used to be that See, family and faith like 
faith and, and family and that yeah the devil has he, he's he got into it he got into it and and the citizens of this united of this nation have allowed it and now they're like, hey, what? They're like, what? I, mean, I have no idea why we're in Ukraine right now. I mean, there's makes no absolutely no sense that we're watching and giving billions and trillions of dollars to UN a that we have nothing to do with. And now we're dealing with our country falling apart. <laughs> our country will fall apart to a place of no return. After that, there's no United States, there's no help, there's nobody you're gonna be able to call. None of that will happen. So you have you really want to wait until that happens for people in Hollywood to go, oh man, I can't call this, I can't do that, I can't no, no, no. you have no rights anymore. Um I was gonna show I I can't get up invented. I can't get up in time, but um I think that's a big show too, to be honest with you. What I mean by that is you know that guy was like a comic act did you ever see the 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 president of Ukraine? He was <laughs> he's an entertainer. He's a comedian. He wear he, he did vaudeville. He's, he's doing acts. He was doing he, like he's the worst at the table. He's the guy that you call on, on, on a, uh, at the gay parade. Yes, to, to close to, to close the show. Yes, you know what I mean. He's the guy yes. with the rainbow. Did you see him when he was? He, he's got the high heels on he's and he guy. had the tights on. You know how many Americans have never seen that? I'm like, how do you? Hence, why they want to ban TikTok. And he's got billions of dollars. And his wife is going to Zurich, right. is going over here, buying Gucci's right. and all this stuff. And the country's falling apart. And we have homelessness. We have people dying on our streets. And crime is rising when, to a place of no return. And taxes. We can't even buy a steak because they want to cut down our farmers. And now steak is bad. So you have to eat bugs. But this guy's dancing. And his wife is going to Zurich and buying Gucci stuff. So, hey, it's only you know what's going on? It's a matter of time, bro. It's a matter of time and I'm not, I, there's always hope, but I tell you what, it's mind boggling what people get up and march for. And I'm also convinced too, when people march and they do all that, it is a very well-organized, well-funded, all of it. Whenever you see a big movement, that is an outside source that was well-funded because I, I keep saying it blows my mind, blows my mind that you can have, we'll call them illegal, illegal people coming in here, not refugees. And you're allowed to stay in hotels and you sent our citizens to kill and get killed and you do nothing for them. Sorry, YouTube. I know they do some things before you say this is false information. And nobody's marching. Nobody's in the streets while their son is trying to figure out their life the rest of the life with prosthetics that he most said. No one's, no one has an issue with any of that. We're going to worry about that is when I lose hope in. Almost in... a million kids who are lost and not found kidnapped tra trafficking all over our country just the united states eight hundred thousand we're the worst million children. where are they and then we're worrying about ukraine we should we should prioritize our needs and go our children come first our country our military our cops our our, our regulations everything should be for the american people and to protect them now the american people are only good at pain giving money, giving more money and time and risking their lives and their livelihood and their future over these politicians who are completely brainwashed a small part of the country, which is the media, entertainment. And with that, they own everybody else. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a progress that has been taking not that many years, but to accomplish that, is, it's amazing what, the, what Satan has done in such a short amount of time. It's completely taken over and changed the world at like, Upside down. I will, I will leave us with this, Antonio. This was great talking to you. Uh, you too, buddy. The movie, one more time, and then I'm going to close on this. The movie. Grace by Night comes out in theaters in June, and that's a film that people should see if they want motivation and love and kindness. And, you know, when people break down, there's hope 
there's things that they could do and, and it's never over until it's over. The, the, that's the kind of movie that we want to see, you know, that moves you, you get out. There's no political stuff. There's no like, Oh, I got to No, It's a great film that made me feel good about life, good about my country and good about hoping for something better. This is the type of film. So just like that film, just like your film, our country, everything in life, dark, it's dark right now, but there's always that strike of a match and that little bit of light lights up the whole We work really place. well. Just to end it, we work really well as a country when we're against the wall. I got to say that. I agree. When we're really against the wall, we come together. And I think we're against the wall now with this election. And I think we we're going to come together in November and go, I don't care if the guy did this, this, this. This guy's better. Trump is going to lead my country. He's going to protect me. He's going to protect my bank account. He's going to protect my future. He's going to protect and make sure that my neighborhood is clean and all that other stuff. And America first. So I'm going to vote for this. So I think we're against that, the wall, and we're going to succeed because we're fed up. And I think people are fed up with the nonsense. They're fed up. Hey, man, I wish yeah, you the best. Just- God bless, Hammer. I'll see you in Tampa sometime, I hope, before you head to Australia. I love to, man. I love to. All the best to you. Thanks for coming along. My pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Antonio Sabato Jr. Dude, I didn't know he's a big race car driver. Very. Dude, I love guys like this. He's family. He's faith, uh, morals, common sense, and doesn't back down and, and doesn't compromise to the evil, to the dark, um, to the agenda to the propaganda. It just doesn't do it. And we need a lot more of Antonio Sabato Jr. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I wish you all the best. I want to thank him for hanging out. You guys um, have a good week. Take care of one another. Go check on your neighbor. Even the one that has different views than you. Go check on them. Make sure they're okay. Call If your mom's still alive, call and tell you you love her. If your dad's still alive, call him. go tell him you love him. Give him a hug. All right, all the best to you. See you next week on the Bruniverse. Hey, this is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week. And have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there.